Do you regret selling the tapes to WWE considering what they've done with them? And also you had no idea of knowing what kind of business Cornette's collectibles would turn into. (laughs) Do you regret selling the tapes now looking back? Um, I wish more people could see the whole run and see it in order. Uh, because I was sold on the, the idea that they were going to eventually be putting all this stuff up. Uh, I don't regret getting my money back. And that was a lot of money to turn down. And I would have still had to, cause that was 17 years ago. Now I would have had to wait a long time to, and then fuck, I'm having a hard enough time keeping Cornette's collectibles open right now for too much work. So there were 200 episodes of television, 200 hours. And they all fit together from one to 200. They all have a history and obviously we couldn't foretell the future, but they lead to something and that you get to see a payoff of. So I wish more people could see them and see them in order and how it was presented. But, but I, I did like getting my money back. Um, I'll say, but I'll tell you it, it, it to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of more of a clemp that people never will see the OVW run because my booking was much better in OVW than it was in Smoky Mountain. It was more involved. I had more challenges thrown at me. I had, uh, I had more experience at it. I had better ideas. Um, it made more sense. I think even because we were able to do a show every week instead of a taping where we taped three or four shows at a time, which you know, uh, is easier than to make things flow. And people is never, especially the old stuff at the old building from 99 till 2002. I don't think WWE will ever air that except the clips of, you know, Cena's first, this and Batista's first that, but the stuff, when we moved in the new building from 2002 till, till pretty much the end 2005 was my best booking work ever and especially when i was having to jump through all the hoops that they were sending me to make the shit make sense anyway do you regret selling those tapes uh well no i here's the thing um or were you in a tough situation over the ownership where well no for one thing it wasn't all my decision because danny davis was involved secondly as we've mentioned before they wrote a bad contract and it was more like they needed OVW at the time because they hadn't figured out a way to fuck Danny yet. And so they had to give us a payment to clear up any disputed rights that there may be to the TV shows is the way that they phrased it. They were giving us that money just to make sure that there's no, but they own it. Well, then why are you giving us this money if you think you fucking ironclad own this shit? So, but, I, you know, I, I think even if I, for artistic purposes, would have liked my my work to be seen by a wider audience, Danny would have probably said, that's a lot of fucking money. <laughs> and so, I, you know... It wasn't all my decision. And at the same time, um, you know, what could we have done with it anyway? Who's going to sit down? I booked, what's six years times 52? I've a 300 and approximately 20 consecutive hours of wrestling television. Who's ever going to sit down and watch all that from start to finish? And the same thing. It made sense from start to finish and it had a history and it led somewhere. Uh, but you know, I don't know how we would expose that to a wide audience, but anyway, yeah, that, that was the thing. They, they just announced one day when they kept telling us things that we couldn't do with our TV show. And we actually had a couple of international deals still in the two thousands. That was a thing that, uh, and they said, no, we, we don't want the show on there. We don't want you to deal with this person. We're like, what the fuck? Then one time they even started paying. So we wouldn't sell VHSs of OVW TV. They started to Rob Feinstein. They started sending us the money that he had offered us per week to buy the tapes, just to not send him the tapes. But, uh, at, at then it, at finally they, they acted like, well, we own the TV shows, the OVW shows. 
And Danny Davis said, I was not, it was not brought to my attention and I was not aware that I'd sold the rights to the TV show that I produce and fucking pay to air that I started in the company that I own and founded to you. And they said, oh, see right here, we had signed <laughs> the original developmental contract stated that they would send us some contract talent for us to provide our training services for but that, that they would own the tapes of these performers. Well, at first, we were doing a weekly one-hour television program with referees and a full crew of wrestlers and announcers and et cetera, and they sent us six guys, three or four of whom had never wrestled before and so weren't even television ready. So I said, so you mean because we had two guys under your contract on that first TV show, that means from then on you own all these TV shows. What about all the non-contract talent and announcers and referees and personnel and the fact that we have paid to produce and air this in our markets from our company that is incorporated in the state of Kentucky? Fuck you, you don't own shit on our TV shows. <laughs> And I, I can't remember what it was. It was a nice little payment that they sent down to clear that issue up, and then they owned the TV shows. Well, I'll tell you what. This has actually been a lot of fun talking about this stuff. I'm going to ask you another wrestling history-related question from myself in okay. a moment. But first, I want to say that, you know, thinking about the way your tapes have been handled, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, OVW, this rich wrestling history, you may want to look into if there's a way to claw back the deal. And perhaps you need an attorney who likes battling these corporate giants who like to come down on the little guy and just beat him up. Perhaps you need someone who loves kicking some ass in the courtroom. Someone who has some experience in suing professional wrestling organizations. Someone who fights for the little guy and brings the big man to his knees, screaming, uncle, 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 I wonder who that man could be. Call Stephen P. Or two. Those are the rest. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, whether it be an evil empire in professional wrestling or just a heartless conglomerate that has sold you poisoned jujubes, whatever the case may be, our friend and yours, Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, can fix you up and put you back on the path to righteousness. Bring the offending parties to their knees. And in a very nice but firm way, tell them, pay up. And by the way, I've just recently gotten my paperwork. Um, you know, I don't know if I even on my keyboard have one of those little fucking symbols that you put next to the trademark names. But by God, Jim Cornette, I own Jim Cornette. It's the best purchase I've ever made. I have no buyer's remorse. And anybody that bandies around Jim Cornette or puts my name on their lips, or more importantly, tries to make money off of it, is now officially on the wrong side of the government and on the wrong side of the aforementioned attorney that you need to retain for your problems, Stephen P. New. I own me now. Stephen P. New can make you people own yourselves, and he will own anyone else who tries to intimidate you. You know who better watch out? 3M. Yeah, those 3M people with the the they manufactured defective earplugs and caused damage to our service people. 3M is going to be 3P after Stephen P. New gets finished with them. Piss poor and and poor. That's three P's. <laughs> and puny. Yeah, that's that's three. No, it's three. <laughs> three. Now it's three. Maybe four. We don't know. The point is, you don't even have to count. Stephen will do the counting for you, and and he'll do the thinning for you, too. Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. Get even with Stephen. If you need to sue, call Stephen P. New. What does 3M stand for? 
I don't fucking know. How about that? There we go. It's it's it stands for, if, if they fight Stephen P. New in court, it's going to be fried, died, and laid to the side and dicked by the dingle dong of destiny. That's what it's going to be.